This weekend, we're in Pokagon State Park, but it turned out not to be the relaxing weekend we were hoping for. Welcome to Adventures with Heckenback. Tim and I found ourselves with a free weekend mid-June, and we had been here to Pokagon a couple years ago and really enjoyed camping here, so we thought we would give it a try again. Pokagon State Park is in the northeast corner of Indiana. It's easily accessible and has lots to do. There's an inn with a restaurant, a lake, horseback riding, bicycling and hiking trails, and there's quite a bit to see and do in the area as well. We had come here with a plan. We had four new pudgy pie recipes we were wanting to try out, and so we thought we would record videos of those. And then the rest of the time, we were hoping just to relax. It seems that wasn't meant to be, though. Mm. Mm. Want me to cut yours, too? Yes, please. As we listen to the chaos around us, we realize that the last time we were here was in the middle of the week. It was much quieter then. We are adaptable, though, and this was a good reminder of why we prefer dispersed camping. One of the really cool things Pokagon has is their refrigerated toboggan run. It's usually open November through February. This is about a two-hour drive from our home, and so we used to bring our kids here to do the toboggan run. We haven't done it in years, and Tim and I were thinking maybe we should come this winter and give it a try again. Instead of hanging out at camp, we decided to go do some exploring. We're pretty familiar with the park, but there was one thing we had never stopped to see. This is Pokagon's historic gatehouse, built in the 1930s. Historic gatehouse. Pocket Museum. Um, Brown County. I think that's Brown County. <gasps> You're so good. Now you're... Um, Spring Mill. Okay. Oh, McCormick's Creek. Oh, it's been a long time since I've been to McCormick's Creek. That's Spring Mill. <laughs> uh, hmm. I don't think it's tricky around. I think it's Clifty Falls. Wow. Which one's that, dear? A turkey run. <laughs> hey. You're so funny. Admission 10 cents each. Back in the day, huh? Yeah. I'm liking the idea of a pocket museum. Doesn't take you forever to look at it. Mm -hmm. Just kind of a quick stop. After checking out the museum, we left the park. There are some other natural areas to explore nearby, but since we visited them before, we decided to check out some of the communities near Pokagon. This is the town of Orland. Birthplace of Steuben County. Mm. We saw something that looked interesting on Google Maps, so we decided to check it out. Orland, Orland town. town Park. Old gateway to it, Orland Fish Hatchery. Oh, that's why they got all these little ponds. Yeah. Interesting. So this is what a fish hatchery looks like, huh? Yeah. Then they got steps that go down into mm -hmm. it over there. Oh, they got something big happening back here. 
That's so park. at the back of the fish hatchery is a town park. The picnic table yeah. matches the entry gateway thing, so I bet it's been here for a long time. It appears that this goes all the way around. They've got the drive down through the middle of them blocked off, roped off. That's where Google Maps was wanting us to go, down the road between them. <laughs> this was a really cool spot. One of the nicest mm -hmm. town parks we've ever seen. Just a uh, wetland over that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a pretty big lake back over here. Well, river, you know, I mean, it's like kind of Crooked Creek, but there's kind of a lake area here and then it turns into a creek. Fawn River Farms, Jacob and Son, 1963. After snapping a few photos, we headed over to Pigeon River Fish and Wildlife Area. We camped earlier this spring at Willow Slough Fish and Wildlife Area and really enjoyed it. We thought Pigeon River had a campground as well, so we wanted to check like it out. camping. Oh, shooting range is down no there. No camping, shooting range. Oh, yeah, but it looks like camping is probably back in here. I see a dump station. Maybe they don't have camping here anymore, because I would say that this should be the campground. We'll keep looking here, but. Well, the sign did say no, no camping. No camping there, yeah. Well, well, no, it said no, no camping. camping. I, Shooting range that way. Like yeah. it did say camping. Oh, you know, it says no camping. Yeah, we'll go that way. So, yeah, what looks like would be mm -hmm. a campsite there. be sad. Yeah, it's all overgrown, I would say. Uh-huh, that they are not, uh, maybe because of 2020 and... Yeah, this would be an awesome place to camp. Looks like there's a, used to be a pit toilet or something right there. I wonder how long, if it was 2020, or, I mean, looks like it could be even longer than that. Yep, somebody out on a boat out there. And this is a loop that just comes back. I've only seen a couple, like, a couple concrete pads like that, which would make sense because it probably wasn't uh, that was probably like an accessible or a yeah, I would say this has been longer than 20 host. yeah, longer than 2020 but who knows, maybe, maybe not either we headed up to the main office to see if we could find out when the campground was closed and why it had been closed. No one was in, but we did find this sign, which didn't give any explanation, and this sign that I thought was interesting. Ontario Dam. 
down here. I mean, they're probably not really anything to see. They're probably just earthen dams. You know, not really. And if we go back this way. Hey, you found a map, though. Yep. Map, map. Who's got the map? You do. I got the map. <laughs> okay, are you doing okay? I'm doing fine. Okay. Not starving or... What time no. is it? 12.34. Is that our time? 1.34. 1.34 their time? 12.34. 1.34 local. Okay. Uh, we'll just go right down here, see if we can see what this little dam is right here, and then we'll head back towards Angola. I'm sure we can find a brewery for lunch. It looked like there were a ton of them. We headed down the road to check out another point of interest. Oh, white flowers, I think. Get over and see what this is. Pigeon River Fish and Wildlife Waterfowl Management Unit. Sign up here is. I see a bench. Good place to sit and watch. Dropbox for self service. In loving memory of Donald Waltz. Martin Memorial Marsh, dedicated to the memory of Dale Martin, wildlife biologist with the Division of Fish and Wildlife and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. And then we headed into the town of Mongo, where the other campgrounds are to check those out. To turn, well, we could go down a little further. The dam should be right down there, okay, and then we could... So go straight. Go straight, yeah. The town of Mongo is just a little blip on the map, but it is a huge canoeing, kayaking destination, it appears. Training Grand. post. Oh, this is one of the campgrounds. Oh, look it. Cool. Mm-hmm. Huh. Maybe go ahead and drive in and turn around. We'll just come back out. Oh, parking. There's somebody there. And turn around here or turn on this road or Ooh, there are a lot of people here yeah so that trading post looked like that could be a cool place to uh camp and canoe or kayak either look like you could either put in right there or get out right there we checked out their website after we got home, and they have multiple trips you can choose from and all types of camping. We turned around at Nasby Dam and then started south towards Fort Wayne. We were both starting to get a little hangry, so our plan was to head down Highway 3 to a couple of breweries we had on our list. Crooked Creek Outpost is down that way. Camping and canoeing. Mongo River Rod. Hmm? There's oh, Yackers. There's, the dam. there's Yackers. Yep. That is the Mongo Reservoir. Mm. So apparently you could you could park there, put in and just like paddle around the reservoir. Mm. You know the best thing to do when something spoils your weekend plans? Drink some beer, or at least that's what Tim tells me. Sometimes we act like a fool Not aware we're troublemakers Sometimes we try to be cool Not being good
La Auto Brewing. La Auto Brewing is about a half an hour north of Fort Wayne, and it was awesome. Everyone was super friendly, and the food was delicious. Tim and I shared a bowl of the barbecue pulled pork mac and cheese and a pizza that they had on special that weekend. After a relaxing and peaceful lunch, we hopped back in the car and drove about 20 minutes to the town of Auburn. Auburn is home to the Auburn Cord Duesenberg Automobile Museum here on the right. But we were headed to Auburn Brewing Company, of course. They got a lot of nice murals here. Mm -hmm. That it right there. Auburn Brewing Company is in an early 1900s service station. When we arrived, they were just beginning to set up for a street party later that night. They are in the process of opening a kitchen, and as you might expect, all of their beers are automobile-themed. What you think, baby? It's going to be a good day, Tater. <laughs> What are you talking about? The D's, uh, two-thirds, three-quarters, over. It's been a good day. It's been a good day, okay. Okay, Tim was right. Beer did make the day better, but don't tell him that. It was time for us to head the half hour back to Pokagon, though, because we had another pudgy pie recipe we needed to try yep, out. So we're just going to go back to 69 and get on 69. Which is... Uh, we got something going on here, a band setting up. We're going to have competing... Uh, Band's playing. That's a pretty little uh, amphitheater yeah. thing they have here. Auburn seems like an interesting town. We definitely wouldn't mind spending a day here. Even though it wasn't the weekend we were expecting, it still turned out pretty good. Again, every, every evening, it does it. Thanks so much for joining us and we'll be bringing you those pudgy pie recipes soon.